Good afternoon, everybody. Here we are, part B of my favourite interview of the week, Mr. Dave Watson. Dave, how are you, big man? Yeah, I'm good. I'm ready for part two. Uh, we've, had a, we've had a part one. It's gone for 30 minutes, and you've got to watch it right to the end. It's phenomenal. All the information about when he was a Barnsley player, who he played for, only one club, all the games, great info. Absolutely superb. Now we're going to talk about when he got an injury, okay? Now, if you didn't know who Dave Watson basically is, okay, ex-professional goalkeeper for Barsby, played there from 92 to 2001, had a fantastic career, also played for England under 20 and under 21, won a few honours, check them out, and on top of that, he had a bad injury when he was 23, which we're gonna talk about now until the end of the programme, and all about his coaching skills, who he's helped, who's helped him, etc, etc. So stay tuned in, stay to the end, Webby Sports Roundup, here in my manor, in sunny Tenerife. Right, big man, 23 years of age, you had an injury. Now, we didn't talk it in the first part, yeah. so tell the people and the viewers exactly what happened. So, we're playing in a home game against Norwich City, um, we're winning the game 1-0. Uh, back in the day, the, the old corner routine used to be a little clip into the front, flick on, a yeah. few piling in at the back. Okay. Norwich uh, at home, they were good at that. I don't know who flicked it on, but you and Roberts from Steaming at the back post, I've turned and actually made a really good save. But as I've turned, I just knew something weren't right in my knee. Um, and no some goalie, no nothing then, just oh. before half time. Couple of uh, injections in the arse no, at half time. No sub. No sub goalie at that point. So at that time there was only one sub. And it, I think we had three subs, but no sub goal oh, at that okay. point. So just crack on for the second half. We yeah. ended up getting beat 3 1. I could hardly move. Little did I know at that time that I'd never ever play a first team match again. So from that moment, I yeah. did play four or five reserve matches to try and okay. just for me to know that I couldn't do it yeah. because the knee just wouldn't wouldn't cope with it. Oh. But if you can see maybe now, I've uh, had a new knee uh, yeah. a year ago. Okay. And Obviously, it's the best thing I've ever done. Well done. No pain now, no. Uh, and it's the start of a, another chapter now. But of course, so from 23 years of age, obviously when that happened, and, and you, oh, that must have been just disaster. Your head, you've had a great career uh, in Baldy Football Club. Yeah, and with goalkeeping, you get better with age. And at that point, I'd had a good year in the Premier League, even though we got relegated, and I was just finding my feet. I was getting to know what the position were all about, and the game never becomes comfortable, but I would get him more comfortable with the game. Of course. And you're thinking, right, this is my time to step on again, and it's gone like that. And it, look, I didn't know the severity of the injury straight away. So I said within six months I knew the severity. Yeah. My goalkeeping coach at that time was a guy called Eric Steele, who I have a real lot to be thankful for. He ended up you know, having a great coaching career, fit, work, worked at Man United for yeah. probably the last eight or ten years of his career. Fantastic okay. goalkeeping yeah. coach. I was fortunate that he was my goalkeeping coach, but he knew how desperate I'd become and depressed, if you like. And he said, look, if you want to stay in the game, you know, you're a good character. Yeah. Think about doing your coaching badges. And from that moment, that was my new focus, get stuck into doing the coaching badges, educating myself to try then and be, the, I wanted to be the best goalie I could be. And then I wanted to then be, because I'd lost that, I wanted to become the best coach I could be. Before we go any further, when you were playing for England under 20, under 21, uh, obviously playing in the Premier League with Barnsley, was there any stage of your career where there was an opportunity or you thought or you wanted to play for England international? Yeah, look, was that, 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 that's always the dream. You know, if you can be, become a full international, yeah. that's, that, that's just the stuff that dreams Was there many in front of you that you thought were better or... Not you thought we were better, but there was always yeah. Look, step the, 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 look we, we've talked about uh, the guy. Were I ever going to be able to compete with a David Seaman in the under twenty yeah. ones? With me, yeah. It was me, Ian Walker, and Paul Gerrard. Ian Walker, what? Leicester City, yeah. So and Tottenham, yeah. So like, I were up against some good goalies, and, yeah. and obviously Ian went, made uh, full caps. Yeah, he did. Um, but England have always had some some good goalies. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's tough to get to that level. So did I ever think I could get to that? You needed to be fit of and course. stay injury free, of but that would have been the ultimate goal. Yes, sure. of course. And you were only twenty three, so yeah. No, sure. I mean, if you had what uh, nine, you had nine years, obviously uh, playing for Barnsley. Yeah. So you know your your career for Barnsley was superb because you were still a baby. 
Yeah, you know what I mean? And, and certainly in goalkeeping. And, re and retired at 23. As you say, yeah. your Daily Siemens, your Smikers of the world, your Van der Sars, they all play till, uh, till late 30s. Yeah, Boo Fond was still doing it at mid 40s. Yeah, Boo Fond is winning. Yeah, it, phenomenal. Yeah. And if you can stay injury free, yeah. the game becomes easier for you for sure. So, your coaching, so it was Eric Steele that basically gave you the advice to say, go on, try a bit of so, coaching. Try and you try love your football. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so where did your first coaching career start? Oh, so, so, my, uh, I started doing the badges and obviously you start networking then and get to know people. Okay. And um, so, I'd done all the courses. They was that long winded? Or not? Yeah, it took me four years. Four years? So, I did the outfield and the goalies badges because I wanted to be able to do everything. So, how did you earn, How did you have an income? Where was that four year income from there? You must have. How did you so, the income? BFA helped. Oh, okay. But then, obviously, I had to get a job. So, I, my first jobs were part time at Northampton and Oldham. Ah, that's what. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Okay. So, I was working for both clubs, obviously, driving from Barnes. They eat quite easy to get across the Pennines. Mick Woodsworth was the manager at Oldham. Mick Wood. So, you can act. Uh, but because you haven't got your badges yet, yeah. So between that one in four years, yeah. you're still able. You, you work, yeah. You're working towards. Okay. So, so like it's that's, what, that's what you're selling. It's the apprenticeship. You, you can't all of a sudden just open an envelope and you passed. You know what I mean? Okay. So that were my education on okay. the ground, if you like. Yeah. I had started doing things behind the scenes, but as I said, I was doing the goalkeeping and the outfield stuff because I wanted to be as good as I could be. Yeah, of course. So started working part time at both of them clubs. Yeah. Um, and and did that for a year. And then... Um, How does feel? Does that come into it? Yeah, then, then Mick Wadsworth left Oldham and, yeah. he, and he got the job full-time at Huddersfield. Yeah. Um, obviously, Northampton didn't work logistically really for me, so I'd got the choice then because Ian Dowie had gone to Oldham. So Ian Dowie? He, he, Ian said, would I stay? Or obviously, Mick gave me a, one of my first opportunities, uh, asked me to go to Huddersfield and logistically it was closer to me in Barnsley. So I, I, and I knew Mick. I thought, right, well, I'm going to go... And my first full time job at Huddersfield, yeah. Have you always lived in Barnsley? I, that, yeah, that's where I've been all my life. That's where you've been, yeah. like, so obviously, you know. So, your first, very first coaching was at Huddersfield? Well, it's full time job was Huddersfield. Full, uh, full first time when I'm in there every day, yeah. Oh, was it the Macalpine? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Macalpine. Yeah, um, and it ended up being a really tough year. The, the club went into administration, Mick lost his job. Oh. But you learn through all them dark days, you know. You've got to go back to go forward. Yeah. You can't expect yeah, to go so forward every time. End of that season, yeah. I just left the club because there was nothing to be there for. And really, that was the first time I'd ever been out of work because I missed two or three months of the following season. Yeah. But because I'd kind of done well on the courses or whatever, I was doing some FA scouting, I'd done some young youth England teams. Oh, okay. So like, I was building a profile because like I was getting the opportunity to coach the young England goalies, under 17s, under 18s. Okay. So that then became another pathway for me. And then really strangely enough, got an opportunity to go back to Northampton with Colin Calderwood. Yeah. But I went back with him full time for three and a half Swindon. years. Swindon. Yeah. So obviously when I when I committed to working with him, Yeah. I, I moved then, so I moved house and moved down to Northampton oh, yeah. and had three and a half fantastic years there and really obviously got more opportunity <coughs> to coach the Young England teams, yeah. really developed as a coach. Uh, we finally managed to get the team out of League 2 into League 1 and Nottingham Forest came calling for Colin. And, um, yeah, that's what he did, yeah, he did, yeah. When, I remember. When obviously he asked me to go, no-brainer, you know, massive club. All the history, the European stuff, the Brian Clough stuff. Oh. And that was the first time, obviously, and it's not being disrespectful to Northampton or whatever. No. I felt as though I'd gone to a real a big club of course, with some yeah. history and tradition. And but it was a real difficult job. We was were Mark the, Crosley there? No. No. Steve Sutton were working Steve in Sutton. and around the club. Yeah. So he yeah. was working in and around the academy. Yeah. And I'd known Steve for a long time and it, you know, he helped me when I got in there. But well, we were a massive team and you know, we should have got promoted. We, uh, you'll, if you remember it, football fans will remember it. We, we, we won two 0 away at Yeovil in the first leg, and then everything worked against us at the City Ground. We had Prutton got sent off, Prutton, and we ended up losing the semi final oh. uh, to Yeovil. Yo Yeovil, and, yeah. And to be fair, like we we'd done well enough, and the, 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 the club, clubbers, yeah, the club, uh, the club were good to Colin because obviously th that night were a disaster. A but, awesome. but like we started the next year, and we're going well again. And out of nowhere, I got a call from Birmingham City yeah, got it, Dad. to be uh, a coach in the Premier League. So oh, going oh. from League One to the Premier League, it was just a, a no-brainer. And uh, who was manager there? Alex McLeish was manager. Alex McLeish. And, I, and oh. I did five and a half years at Birmingham. Yeah. Cool. Aston Villa. 
he was, yeah. he was in the so, so Rangers. He, yeah, so I, I went to Birmingham, and it's a real strange tale, isn't it? Forrest went on to get promoted. Yeah. Birmingham, we got relegated, uh, and we end up back in the championship uh, together. Dear but, but, no, fantastic. Look, Alec, what, what a guy, really helped me, yeah. and, and really pushed me on as a coach, because he really was the one... After Colin, I built a relationship with Colin, but we never had the finance to really back me building yeah. a department. Okay. You go to Birmingham, Alec really pushed me and let me build a department and, and choose the goalies we, or I wanted to work with. Of course. And the club kind of backed us on that, so we got relegated the first year. Well, I were only there four months. Um, we got relegated. Next year, uh, promoted back to the Premier League, Did finished you? second. Yeah. So we had a good year in the Championship. Mike Taylor, Fantastic goalie for us in the in the White championship. He's, yeah. now, he's now the coach of the team. Yeah, I remember at Birmingham. So he had a fantastic year for us. But like that's when then Alec backed us. Though, you know, we, we wanted to change it up and try and try and yeah. make sure we were getting better. Nigel Spink. I've got Nigel Spink down here. Or something. Yeah, that, that's just go with that. That's that's who I replaced at Birmingham. So he ah. left, he'd left to go to Wigan with Steve Steve Bruce. Okay. And that's when Alec then got the job at Birmingham. Ex Villa. Ex Villa. Thank you, yeah. yeah. Villa. So Villa. he worked a long time with Steve Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. And they'd left to go to Wigan. I came into Birmingham. Okay. And honestly, the best time. As I said, the club and Alec backed me. So when we got back in the Premier League, we signed Joe Hart on loan for the first year. Yeah. Um, he had a phenomenal year. That that really put him on the path later. The career he was going to have. He's out it now. He's still going. Yeah. Doing well, isn't he? Yeah, fantastic. Great guy, great goal. He's still in touch with him. Yeah, good. I'd class him as a friend now, you good. know what I mean? Nice. And yeah. it's important that these relationships stay because for all that you talk about, trying to be the best coach you can of be. Of course. And everybody thinks they're a good coach. Of course. But as you get older, the coaching is one thing, but it's about having a trust and building a relationship with, with the people you work with. With the, with the people, and, yeah. And I think as I got older, that's what I got better at. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, you're good. No, listen, this it comes across. Listen, if you just joined us, Webby Sports Trailer here in sunny Tenerife in my manor. I want to thank Andrew for letting us use his, uh, his big hotel. He's got a massive place here. And this is his good pal, as we all know, Dave Watson. And we're interviewing part B, all about his coaching career since he had his injury when he was 23, many, many moons ago. That's about 27 years ago, isn't 27 it? 27 years ago. That means you're 50, young man. Absolutely. But celebrated my 50th birthday in the reef last September. Absolute quality, mate. That's what it's all about. So you're 51 in September? November. You just said, ah. No, I came, said, I came in September just to <laughs> celebrate while there were a bit more sun, you know what I mean? You do like a beer, do you? Oh, I, I came, oh, I came, oh, I came, I came oh, dear, like yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know that. I said you walk out of, uh, yeah, we will go down that route, right? Listen, I've got, got Ben Foster and I've got Jack Butland as well. So there was something about those three and I've got Roy Hodgson work with, with Ray Clements in the Euro 2012. Yeah, so on, but Birmingham, the story continued. We had Joe out. We'd signed him on loan for a year from Man City. So yeah, we, were City. Ne we were never, obviously, going to be able to do anything. He were going to go back to Man City and start the career yeah. that I thought he could have and that he knew okay. he could have. Yeah. And he went back to Man City. And then that's what I talked about earlier. The club backed me. We have to replace Joe out, who'd had a phenomenal year. And we went and signed Ben Foster for £6 million from Man United. Was that what it was? Six million. Six million. And, and look, the team got relegated that year. Should have never got re relegated. We won the Carlin Cup, got relegated. Yeah. So massive highs and obviously a massive low at the end of it. But because the team got relegated, we couldn't keep Ben. You know, he he, he was a Premier League goalie for sure. So we did a deal with West Brom. Boas Mail came in That's and Ben went the other way. But during all this time, we got a young talent called Jack Butland. Who, who were making his name behind the scenes. Really fortunate that through doing my badges and everything, I'd made a relationship with uh, Mark Yates, who at that point the Cheltenham manager, managed to get Jack sure. out on loan at Cheltenham for a year. So I was doing my work, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, I was doing yeah. my work at Birmingham, back in the championship with Boaz. Jack were earning his corn in Chel one, at Cheltenham, one, one, one road, learning his trade. And um, like yeah. I used to live there. Before and, I came and, and that last year at Birmingham were, were a fantastic year. We were obviously, because we'd won the Carling Cup, Chris yeah. Hutton came in as manager. Chris Hutton. We're, we're, we're in the championship. And your, up, na your name dropping now, son. Oh, no, Newcastle, no. Tottenham, where else is he? Eh? Norwich, Norwich City. Yeah, Norwich City. I went to Norwich with him. Did, after, yeah, then, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah got but right. he's now managing Ghana in the African nations. Is that right? So he's he played, yeah, he managed Ghana last night. They got beat, unfortunately. But, God, uh, yeah. yeah, so he's had a long career. So Chris came in as manager after we got relegated again. Jack's out on loan at Cheltenham, yeah. training with me twice a week. Perfect yeah. scenario. Oh. Getting league football. And without Mark Yates, 
you know, he's tough as a football manager. So he, he backed me and my choice. Obviously, Jack were a real talent, but you still, as a football manager, you've got a chance of losing your job. Yeah. So to take a young one in, fair, oh, fair play oh, to him, you know what I mean? Pressure. Uh, and that year, we were unbelievable, Birmingham. We were in the uh, playoffs. We got beat in the playoffs semi-final by Blackpool. Yeah. We ended up in the Europa League. Got knocked out in the group stage, but on 10 points, it's never been known. No. We got to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, and we, 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 I think we did 60 odd games. It yeah. was incredible. Yeah. But we were, a proper te- we were a proper team, and Chris, Chris, Chris kept it going really well. And it, at the end of that season, I'd just packed my bags, ready to go away from the summer holidays. Um, yeah. go phone for, call come, do you want to come with England to do the Euros in Poland? 2012, we yeah. Ah, no brainer. Yeah, the bags got unpacked and I went straight oh. and, and did, did my thing. And look, that's again, you know, I'll be grateful to Roy forever for that opportunity and ultimately Joe and the goalies I worked with at that point. Um, it, what, a, what a time I had at that point, you know, to work with the national team for four years. Phenomenal. Uh, and Chris, so I'm away doing the Poland and Ukraine. The, who was the boys playing then? Who, who, give us some names. It would have been Gerard. Terry, Steve. Lampard, oh, bloody uh, yeah. Rooney. Oh, yeah. oh, they were a pro- oh, proper team. Oh, dear still, me. Still couldn't win nothing. Well, I'm shaking. They give me all these players over the uh, be podcast. No, but the, t- the team's better this time, isn't it? This, this time we, next summer. We've got a what, chance. What a chance. What a well, chance. listen, we're talking, we're talking Bellingham in Real Madrid. What a player that well, is. Well, mate, he's going to win the Ballon d'Or. He's, he's, he's got to do. Ward Prowse, I think, at West Ham United, not given a chance. He's, I love him when he was in yeah, Atlanta. Great. One of my favourite players. Great, great corner. Yeah. Uh, great free kid. Very unlucky not to be in Foden, Grealish. Oh, dear me. If we can't go and do them... Then I'm, we're going to be disappointed, aren't we? For sure. Uh, and with obviously Declan Rice at Arsenal now, he's like, right, it's been a bit quiet lately. They've lost two on the banks, but um, he'll come back for sure. I'm looking forward it's to it. It's the best chance. It's a oh, proper team. This with year. any proper time team. of doubt. Uh, right, Southampton, you were sent for. No, no, so after Birmingham, so yeah. I'm away at the Euros, yeah. and Chris has left Birmingham, yeah. phones me up, fancy coming down to Norwich. Um, uh, gotcha, okay. yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so. Uh, do the tournament with England. England asked me if I'll do the job. You still living in North ha- in Northampton? No, so I, when I was at Birmingham, I moved up to Birmingham. Okay. So that's where I met Andrew. I ended up living next door to Andrew. Oh yeah, oh, that I'm just that's where the, the connection, connection is. Yeah, so that's so where, you live next door to Andrew. That's Lovely fella. Yeah, oh, great guy. And uh, if you've never he's, he's introduced well. to the reef, so that's it now. Andrew's got a property here, and I've met him down in um, one of my uh, big pubs. I use all the football down three old shoes with Jason, and uh, we talk quite a lot. Big blue nose, lovely, lovely fella. So if you're ever down in Colours of Aki, my man, and he, Andrew's here, we've got to go and see him and have a beer with him. He'll put his hand in his pocket and give, he'll give you the earth. He's a lovely fella. Apart from liking Messi than Ronaldo, so, so we'll forget that. And, <laughs> and he's a good pal of yours, obviously. Absolutely. Um, right, go on, we're at Southampton now. Yeah, no, so uh, Chris phoned, do you want to come to Norwich? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, England had offered me the job to do the next four year cycle with them. Yeah. So I signed for Norwich uh, and I'm doing the, the England job. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, it's like all your dreams have come true. First year at Norwich, really well, stayed in the league relatively comfortably. Second year, tough again. Chris lost his job five, six games from the end. Uh, yeah. Team got relegated. Yeah. I'm going to Brazil with the uh, national team again. Yeah. Obviously, look, you know, we should have done better. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't even get out of the group in Brazil. No. But a fantastic experience for me as a coach oh. to go to a World Cup. Phenomenal. While I'm away again, phone call from Southampton. Do you want to come and join us? Uh, the chairman from Southampton even flew to Miami to come and see me on the training no camp. Way. And when people make that kind oh. of effort, you think, right, I'm coming. He told me Ronald Koeman were going to go and be yeah, manager. Yeah, Ronald Koeman. Phoned him, Ronald. Are you happy? Yeah. Met him when I came back from the tournament. Within half an hour. Very easy for me to Such sort, sort the deal. Yeah. And Southampton, under the two years I had there with him, we were like, it was a dream ticket. Oh, more away, we thought we could beat anybody. Gotcha. But we'd done the team and the people behind the scenes had done some fantastic right, give me, right, recruitment. You know? Do me some name drop, Southampton, in that team then. Uh, so we signed, we signed Fraser Foster. Fraser Foster? You'd got Van Dyke, centre half. Oh. Jose Font, centre half. Oh, oh. Klein, full back. Bertrand signed fullback. Bertrand beat yeah. Chelsea. Chelsea, yeah. Uh, midfield, Schneiderlin went to Man United. Schneiderlin went, yeah, of course he did. Krause, yeah. Wanyama went to Spurs. Of course, Spurs. Prince. Yeah. Tadic we signed. He ended up at Ajax. Gotcha. Virtually won the oh. Champions League. Mane on the other side. We signed Pella, Italian international. Shane Long. 
Shane Long, now he's been about. Yeah, he had a proper Reading, career with Reading, his, Reading, yeah, West Brom. West Brom, then, yeah, small little fella, but yeah. honestly, like he, a kind of he, could, little, he yeah. could occupy a back four on his own. He could. Uh, and we had a fantastic team for two years. Um, Great experience, huh? Well, yeah, we finished sixth and seventh, I think. Phenomenal, you know what I mean? And then, um, yeah, I ended up having eight fantastic years at Southampton. Uh, unfortunately, you know, changing the managers, changing the ownership and of things course, like that. Of course. And then uh, 18 months ago, they decided that uh, they'd had enough of me and they wanted a change. And uh, obviously, reluctantly, I left. But, you know, the team, unfortunately for them, got relegated the year after. Obviously, they're doing well now. But I think sometimes, you know, you've got to... You got to stick with what, what you know. And well, all good like things all come the, to an end. All the years that I'd had working and ex my experiences, you know, you, you can't lose that and think you can replace that quite, no, 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 quite no. easily overnight. Yeah, yeah. But look, the team are, are moving back again. I'm in a better place for it. I, I had time then to take a step back, yeah. look at a new pathway, spend some time at home. I'd spent far too much time away from my wife of and course. my son. Yeah, of course. Um, I wanted to be back home in in the Midlands, in Knoll, Birmingham. I've got a lot of friends and family there, and you know I'm quite settled. But I, you know, you feel you've got a lot more to give still. Of course. So look, I've had my knee done, um, and I'm forging a new path yet. I've, I've had various opportunities. I could have taken full-time jobs for sure. Of course. But look, I, I chose not to do that at that time. I'm doing some mentoring with a couple of goalies now. I'm working behind the scenes at a couple of clubs, and it's amazing our relationships form. I'm now doing podcasts like I'm doing here with you with Ben Foster once a week on, yeah. on his football fill-in and Foscast stuff, which is a new uh, Little pathway bitch, yeah, for me. Why not? I'm absolutely loving it. Yeah, of course. And it just shows what I spoke about earlier. Look, them guys, yes, I think they realise they've got some ability as a coach, but the relationships you forge means you keep these things going afterwards. You have the, right, you just a mentor too, obviously one Jack. Who's the, who's the other guy you... Um, you he, he, he's a young goalie who had, uh, had I signed for Southampton actually, and yeah. he's uh, he's just left Bradford and had a little move up to Carlisle. So, so when you say when you say mentor, explain to the viewers and to me exactly what you mean, because you're not with them twenty four hours a day. You're not with them saying do this, throwing balls at them. No, saying, no, no, so, no. so what do you do? What's just what's they're happening? using my experience okay. to help them through. Yeah, not everything's rosy. No. And it's just that being that shoulder to cry. And of course I go and watch games and you know they'll send me clips and videos and training. That's all part of it and that's just using my knowledge. But it's really just, just helping them along and going through moments where we think we can certainly do things a little bit different. Yeah. But it's also somebody that they can talk to and know they can trust, which is what we talked about earlier. It's yeah. about relationships. Of every time. And, and just them then being comfortable yeah, yeah. and being ready to attack the next day's training session or be ready for the next game yeah. or all the circumstances that come along. So look, goalkeeping coaching is w were my passion. For the last three or four years at Southampton, my knee got that bad that I had to stop doing that, and I just became a, like assistant. Okay. And I did all that, but I'd done the set plays for fifteen years at various clubs. Yeah, of course. So that was nothing new. And again, that's obviously now you, every club's got a set piece coach yeah. and all this. All these things are just developing all the time. There's so many roles. So there's so much I could offer to any club yeah. or manager, you know. And and yeah, I, 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 you can't say who and what you do all the time, but no. yeah, managers will phone you because they want a bit of advice. I've been in the game since I was 16. Yeah, you, know, and you, you feel as though you've got a lot to offer, but at the minute, I'm really happy just dipping my toe in here and there. And if I were full time, I'd never see you in Tenerife, would I? Easy, all right, you would do it full time, sir. Right, Jack Butler, I want a bit of better. Listen, he's a Rangers number one. Yeah. He's still in the England fold. Yeah, look, I think it's difficult because he's not played enough football down south. He needed yeah. to go and, uh, you know, get his career back on track. But yeah. he wants to play football. All players want to play football or they're in the wrong job. Of course. And look, we talked about Joe Hart, Celtic, massive club. Jack at Rangers, massive club. And ultimately, it's a platform. Yeah, They've yeah. got through in the European stages. Uh, it's a platform. And at the minute, he's put himself back it, on the yeah. forefront of everybody's radar. Yeah, of course, yeah. You yeah. know, he's, um, yeah. you know, he's going to do what he's doing at Rangers because he's top quality. But for him now, he's fighting to win trophies. They won yeah. the trophy before the yeah. winter break. Cut a risk of it, the, yeah. They the managed to stay in the, um, the European the stuff in for February. Yeah. Um, yes. And they're still the, fighting the, for the Yeah, they're in touching distance, but the, it's a massive club. Yeah. If you can perform in front of 56, and they are demanding crowd when I've been up there, by the way. Oh, oh my gosh! Well, um, well, but, but look, that's what he, that's what you do it for. Yeah, brilliant. Because that's 
that's why you're a footballer because that's the pressure and yeah. the environment you want to be on. Well, the Rangers must be horrendous because they are such a massive. Since I've lived here, and I'm, oh, I've got Paul Sherrill, I've got, I've got my mate Dave, I've got so many Rangers fans, Jimmy, they're all teddy bears. And oh, look, they, they're, they're an institution. They absolutely. Have, they're north, they, south, east. They, they love their football team. Yeah. And I've enjoyed watching some games up there and getting to know what it's all about, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But look, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Hopefully, I'm giving a little bit of something back yeah. after 50 years. For sure. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, trying yeah. to make sure people yeah. can push on. And yeah, for forward. sure. That's fine. Now, a bit of, I know you do a bit, of beat, uh, bit for Ben Foster. Everybody knows Fozzy. If you don't, then you're, you're, you're under the carpet. I mean, he was at Wrexham recently. Uh, we all know what happened there. Yeah, they had a yeah. bit of an hammering. If, was it 6 3 7 3? Something, something stupid. And he thought, I've got to turn it in, haven't I? Yeah, the body tells you a different thing. Yeah, it, his age. It, it, unfortunately, yeah. the emotion of saving the penalty, the team yeah. getting promoted. Yeah. You know, your body, your, your head's telling you, I want to do this. But you can't. They're yeah. back in the league, I want to stick with it. Yeah. But ultimately, his body were never going to run. Well, they want to, they've got two big owners, they want to progress, and, yeah, he, and sure. he knows he can. He's got his great podcast, which obviously you can tell people all about. Yeah, Ben Foster's uh, Foscast and Football Filling. Honestly, fantastic listen, guys. Make sure you get onto it, and I think I think you'll be uh, signing up for a while. Nearly nearly as good as where these. Yeah, listen, he's, he's a million times better than me, that's for sure. He's a lot younger, but I, I, listen, I watch it all. And I've seen you on it, but I've seen you two or three times, repeat and repeat, just to see, and, and you're so relaxed and loving it, like we are now. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's just a chat. Oh, it's just a chat, have a bit of fun, yep. and just enjoy yourself, and he's great. So if you, if you haven't subscribed to Ben Foster, please get on there, subscribe, and watch it. Now, the other thing is, I've asked me good pal, he says he'll see what he can do, so when he goes on to Ben Foster next week, he's going to try and give Webby Sports Rab a big, a big, big shout. Is that right? That's right, big man. We can do that. And I've you? loved it. Oh, Absolutely uh, loved right, it. I'm only good because I'm going to go home tomorrow. I know, yeah, and I'm still going to be here. Uh, right, listen, last question, any ambitions? I know we talk, we've talked about it in the last few minutes, but any real ambitions? Did you ever want to be a, a manager or not? Is that ever sort of crept in mind or no, yeah, that's a tough one to go down? To, to be honest, n not really. And I've not had the opportunity to be a manager. I felt as though, uh, obviously, towards the end of my time, I was more of an assistant manager. Okay. I thought, yeah, look, I can do the first team training sessions on the grass. Yeah. I can take the set plays. If I want me to take the goalies, I can. Yeah. But really, you know, be when honest, you get to 50, I've done a million and one sessions. Yeah, of course. It's really about helping and knowing and understanding the game and, and being there for the manager. Yeah. So all the breed of young managers now, they all want to take every training session anyway. So uh, it's gotcha. just about guidance and help and understanding in the match day situations and things like that. There was just very, very quickly, I was just watching one of, um, um, it was it, uh, Henderson. I don't think it was on Fozzie last night, I watched a little bit. And they just said that he was the man, Henderson yeah. of Liverpool. Yeah. Um, when he walked in the room, we'd listen to him, he'd advise us, he was the main man. The leader, yeah. Yeah, an absolute leader. Yeah. And then obviously he's gone to Saudi Arabia, we all say the reasons why, we all know the reasons why, but listen, it's down to them. If they want to go and earn yourself a good packet before they retire, let them do it. We're not here, it, to, we're not here to judge them. We cannot, we're not here to judge anything. That's why I don't like people. They go on to say, oh this, that. No, don't judge anybody. Quick question, VAR, yes or no? No. No, I'm the same. There was one yesterday, Aston Villa Everton took Dawn out for yeah, a bit of a Yeah, we watched the game down at the shoes. Yeah, did, yeah. Disaster. And I was, I was at my house, put it on for two minutes. Three and a half minutes minimum, was there a goal? Yes, yeah, they kept going forward, back, forward, no, back. I were at the game at Villa Park the week before when they yeah. beat Burnley 3-2, okay. honestly. So Burnley have a man off, Yeah. the 2-1 down, yeah. and Villa are uh, flying. They score a goal for two each. Yeah. They don't know whether to celebrate or not celebrate. No, that's right. Four yeah. minutes of VAR, yeah. and then all of a sudden, they're all at the halfway line. Burnley fans just go, oh, we've got a goal. We've got ten men, and it's two each. The whole thing, in that game against Villa Burnley, yeah. the game stopped five times for VAR. Yeah. Each one was three minutes. Yeah. It was a disaster. The yeah. whole There was no feeling in the ground no, for either team. I don't I remember. And that's where I feel real sympathy for the players. Yeah, same it's just carnage. You mm. can't celebrate. You can't do anything. No, I know. Big shout out to Coventry after beating Leicester, top of the table championship. They're still going to win the league, but what a phenomenal game. Just under 30,000. The M69 gang, we took them, didn't we, son? All I'm going to say, listen, he's been, he's been over and about. Come here. Oh. 
Come here. Come and sit here for two seconds. Come on, come on. You look like a bag of... But it doesn't matter. This is, listen, this is the man I drink. Blue nose, Birmingham City, through and through. When this big man went to live in Birmingham, he found out this was his neighbour. And listen, it's a thumbs up. And the story's been like this ever since. Ever since. Yeah. Come and see us in the shoes. Come and see us in the shoes. No, no. Have you been drinking today? No, not yet. Are you yet. drinking I'm later on? As soon as this is finished, we're going. Oh, my God. <laughs> we're all going down the phone. Right, listen, all I'm going to say is, as I always say, massive thank you to the man himself. Hey, Love it. Dave Watson, phenomenal. Andrew, thank you for using your beautiful pad, mate. Oh, Super. Mate, we'll, be, we'll be up again soon when you come over, Big Man. <laughs> we'll have part three next time. Webby Sports Roundup in my manner in Kale Slovakia. If you've not subscribed, press that button. Any comments down below, I'll send it to the big man and subscribe to my Facebook page. Foggy does it all. He's a big Tottenham fan. Give him some love. All I'm going to say is now, from us, me, him, you, where, whatever, from sunny Tenerife, it's a bit cloudy today, get over there and turn that thing off, big man. <laughs> so for me, Webby, big man, love it, see you.